Hello and everyone, welcome to my newest series, uh, my newest Pokemon, actually my only Pokemon series, and my first and most likely only Pokemon series, Mix-Up. Yeah, Mix-Up is actually a uh, new series I'm thinking of doing, I'm wondering how it will turn out. Uh, basically, the idea of Mix-Up is to uh, kind of touch on some more obscure topics than most Pokemon shows and whatever, like... Some more interesting decks that you could, could try out, or some interesting strategies, or even just some interesting things about the game that you might want to try out. I don't know, just, you know, some things that aren't too covered by most, you know, Pokemon websites and channels and people. I don't know, They're just some things I thought might be a little interesting. So, uh, here you go, my show. Uh, of course, just a couple of days ago, there was actually the pre-releases for the newest set came out, Next Destiny, so I thought... What better way to fit the first episode of Mix Up than to take a look at some of the cards from the newest set. Uh, I'm usually going to have one of these once a week since Pokemon cards are some of the things I buy least. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I hope you guys like the show. And I hope you like this kind of looking at the new s cards. Um, all the scans uh, I'm providing here are actually provided by Pokebeach.com because uh, I'm going to be going right on, I'm going to be taking them right from Pokebeach.com. So yeah, it's a great site, great new site for Pokemon. Uh, check it out, you know, it's really awesome. Pokebeach, can you see that? Yep, Pokebeach. Okay, so now then my shout out to Pokebeach. Uh, Let's get to some of the cards I thought were interesting. So if there's 99 cards in the set, supposedly there's some secret rares. Yes, I said multiple, unlike the the first few black and white sets, there's multiple secret rares. How many? Let's see then. But yeah, um, this is going to show all the cards I find a little interesting, and all the Ixes I'm saying, saving for later, for this reason why. So yeah, let's get started. First one I think is a little interesting is uh, Moongus. Uh, basically, it has a p ability that says called Spore Side. It says when you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve on your Pokemon, your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned and confused, which is nice to deal some damage. Uh, it's not the greatest power, but it could be used in some decks that prevent your punt from retreating, like Dredagon, Null Victories. So, yeah. Pretty good uh, Pokemon. You might want to try it out in some decks. I don't know what decks you could try it out in, but... Yeah, I know there's all these shiny EXs catching your eyes, but don't worry, we'll get to them later. Uh, next one, uh, let's see. Let's talk about Moltres. Uh, Moltres has 120 HP for basic, and he has uh, some not so great attacks. He has for a fire and two Carlos, it is 50 damage and burns. It's not too great. And for one fire and three Carlos, it is 90 damage and there's discard of fire energy attached to this Pokemon. It's not too great of Pokemon. Really, really just not too great. I, I, I'm gonna, since I'm talking about some of the other legendary birds, I thought I'd talk about Moltres, so yeah, he's not too great, but and he could be good in some decks, I guess. Next one is Chandelure, not the you know fantastic one, psychic one from Null Victories, but this one's a different one. But it doesn't work too bad with the uh, Chandelure decks because it's power, flame burst, for one fire, and uh, for just one fire, I mean, it does 30 damage to two of your opponent's bench Pokemon and 30 damage on itself, so that's spread around 90 damage, kind of like a mini Glaciate, you know, Kiram's attack. Uh, and then what you could do with this is for, since he has two retreat costs just like the other Chandelure, you could put Chandelure, the Psychic one up, put 30 damage on, and then you bring this one up to do 30 damage to two more bench Pokemon and the active Pokemon, so 120 damage per turn, but you want, but that wouldn't work, you only want to put like one or two in your Chandelure decks and put some Rainbow Energy in, I guess. You know, if that's t your type of, and you might want to put some Pokemon Centers in as well, but we'll get to that card later, because this one's in the set. So yeah. Channel are not too bad. Next card is Reshiram. Not Reshiram EX, but regular Reshiram because they made a reprint of the black and white one, like the fifth one. So there are five versions of this card. There's the regular one for black and white, full art from black and white. This version, there's a tin promo and a box promo. So five versions. You can't fit. You cannot fit all the versions of Reshiram, the same exact attacks, in one freaking deck. That's just ridiculous. More EXs. Next one is Starmie. I think this is actually a pretty interesting one. It has 90 HP, free retreat, which is nice, and an attack called Swift, which for one water does 50 damage and isn't affected by weakness resistance or any other effects. So, does 50 damage straight. It's a, I think it's a pretty nice attack for one energy. 
just to start off. Uh, not probably not going to find its way into too many decks. Since it doesn't apply to weakness, it can't be really used to fight Dawn Fan at all. Because it only does 30 damage, but... Uh, maybe it does go through ability. I don't think it does. Or Poke Powers, or Bodies, or whatever. So yeah, Starmie. Could be useful. It also has the Retreat cost. Blech. Uh, next one, I guess, is Articuna, because I say this one is the middle of the pack in terms of legendary birds. Moltres being the worst, so that, again, it has 120 HP, nice resistance to fighting, and for one water and two Carlos, it is 50 damage, and it's a chance for paralyzing. So, uh, not too great, and Icy Wing for, or Ice Wing for one water and three Carlos, is 80 damage. Better than Moltres' attack, I'd say, but still not too great. Uh, the next Pokemon we're looking at is Vanillux. Vanillux, Vanillux, whatever. Uh, there's a nice ability, it's called Slippery S Souls, which says, when sitting your turn, you may switch your axe Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. If you do, your punt does the same exact thing. So, it could be a really nice card for free retreat. Uh, but, again, your opponent gets to retreat as well. So, that's the downfall, I guess. It could actually work it well in Chandelure decks, because you could retreat for another Chandelure. So, you could, like, say, if you're running four of the Psychic ones, you could... Uh, run a few of these and then you could retreat for all of them in one turn do 120 damage plus the attack if you decide to use it So yeah, that could actually be pretty useful with uh, that But again, as I said your opponent gets to do that as well But since Chandler can attack the bench and such it doesn't mean it can attack whatever it wants with its uh, Power or glow it doesn't really matter And by the way, if, if you're not really too familiar with the metagame I don't suggest watching this because I'll be mentioning a lot of metagame type cards and such so Vanillix is a really good card. Next one is Jelly Scent, which is actually a really interesting one. Uh, basically, for one card, it says a tackle called Vengeful Wish, which uh, uh, says, if the Pokemon was damaged by an attack during your opponent's last turn, this attack does the same amount of damage to the defending Pokemon, which isn't too... which uh, you might think is kind of bad, because it only has 120 HP, just sort of the magic number from surviving Reshiram and Zekrom, and he has a Lightning Weakness, which is really bad for Reshiram, Zekrom... I mean, just Zekrom, Magnezone... And it's just, yeah, since those are the two most popular decks right now, and that and Durant, uh, Durant, Jellicent may not be the best Pokemon, but think about it. It doesn't say the exact attack like Zoroark. It's literally just the, just the damage. So say, I mean, this is going to be very likely that it happens, very, very unlikely that it happens, but say, um, you get hit by Bangzon's Lost Burn for one, and it does 100 damage, for one, one energy, so it does 100 damage. And this turn, you use that attack, it will do 100 damage. You don't have to put any cards in the Lost Zone, which is the good thing about it. But, again, since it has just shy of the magic number, the Lightning Wing just may not see as much play as it could see. So, yeah. Next card I'm looking at is Zapdos, because he's actually, I think, the best Legendary Birds. Uh, for, he has, again, 120 HP, and resistance to Lightning, and weakness to Lightning. Resistance to Fighting, weakness to Lightning, and 2 or 3 cost. And his first attack is, I'd say, the best of the three. For one Lightning and two Carlos, it does 50 damage to any of your opponent's Pokemon. So I think it's a pretty nice attack, just because it's definitely better than the other two. Because you can, of course, snipe. It's still a little better than Omega's snipe, and you can get him up in two turns with a Lightning and Carlos. Or you can get his second attack up in one turn if you use a Patriot Shaman combo. Speaking of second attack, his second attack is one Lightning and three Carlos. And it says flip four coins for each heads, it does 50 damage. So that could be a nice attack because it average of 100 damage for four energy. Uh, that doesn't sound too great, but you can, as I said, you can pull off a like, Patrick's your same in combo and hit a double Carlos and do 100 damage on the first turn with absolutely no side effect. Well, you might do 100 damage. It's very likely that you will. But, uh, yeah, I guess that's, uh, that dose is not too bad. Next one is Luxray, which is a pretty interesting one. It has 140 HP, which is pretty nice for stage 2, same as Magazone Prime. One more tree cost, which is also pretty nice. Second attack isn't too great, but his first attack, Flash Impact, is pretty nice. It's, a, it's for one lightning and six. it does six damage. It does, tw does 20 damage to one, one of your Pokemon, and the name is Flash Impact. Sound familiar? Well, yeah, it's the exact, basically the exact, very, very similar attack to Luxor GL of Lex, which, which was the most played card in the past couple formats. In fact, it won Master and Senior Division, I think, in, a, in one World Championships. Uh, Lark, Lark, I mean Luxray in combination with Garchomp, C-Level X. But um, it's not as great now because it's a stage 2 and you can't pull off on the first turn. But it does only do 20 damage instead of 30 and it's 1 energy. So yeah, Luxray could be played, but 
Uh, you can see a card later in this set, uh, he would actually be, see a little more play than you might think he will. It. Yeah, sorry if that bothers you. But yeah, looks right, not too bad. Next is Abstrika. It's not too great of a Pokemon. It does have a, one thing to note, though. Uh, for one Lightning and a Cuddleless, it does 40 damage and says your opponent can't play any item cards for his or her, from his or her hand during his or her next turn. Well, that could be really nice. Uh, it's very similar to Dialga G level X. No, Dialga, just a regular Dialga G. But uh, it doesn't block stadium cards and does a lot more damage. So it could be an early trainer lock, but it's one that runs on Lightning, which isn't too common in trainer lock decks. So he could be played, but I, I don't really see him playing. Next one again is Zekrom, which again is five versions, just like Reshiram. Uh, pretty silly. And there's something odd, these cards aren't actually hollow. You'd think they'd be hollow, but they're not. I have actually, I actually have the Zekrom one. He's not hollow. It's kind of interesting. So next one, more shiny EXs I'm not going to show. For until lit until later. Next one is Gardevoir, which uh, is actually a pretty nice ability. Which says each of your psychic energy attacks to your psychic Pokemon provide two psychic energy, and you can't apply more than one at a time. So you can't just have like one uh, one psychic energy provide four or something. You have four Gardevoirs out, which that could be really nice. With uh, I might actually bring Got the Tail Dex back because you'll do twice basically do twice the damage because it does twenty more damage. And this basically it's like attaching two. Um. Um, the psychic energies, but it's only your psychic Pokemon. But there are a lot of psychic Pokemon that work well with it. Um, like uh, I know I'm going out a little louder, but with Darmanitan, it goes really well with Darmanitan Zen mode, by the way. Uh, with his second attack, Darmax Atan, for two Carlos, it does 50 damage, or it says flip a coin, and for for each energy attached to Pokemon, and for each heads, it does 50 damage, kind of like Audino from uh, Emerging Powers. But with Gardevoir, you actually do twice. You do twice the coin flip. So say you have three energy attached to Darman, three psychic attacks to and you actually flip six with Gardevoir. So that could be doing some really nice damage with just a stage one and a stage two, and only like three psychic energies they have, which would be 150 damage. So I, I, I might actually that might actually be a deck to try out if you want to. So next one is Musharna. Uh, basically, it has a nice ability. It says once during your turn before you attack, you may look at the top two cards of your deck, choose one and put it in your hand, and the other goes back in the top of the deck. So that could be a pretty nice draw supporter. Uh, or just a draw, not a supporter, a draw engine, I guess. A pretty bu good built-in, or pretty good uh, draw supporter, supporting Pokemon, like, I wouldn't say it's as good as Magnezone or Ninetales or some other Pokemon, but it still is pretty nice if you're just looking for a decent draw supporter to put in your deck. It does have three retreat costs, though, so it can easily be captured up. But, uh, you know, it could, it could definitely work if you uh, do it right. Which, uh, yeah, you could also, well, whatever. It's It could be used for a nice draw support. So, yeah, maybe it's the next one. No fighting Pokemon for some reason. Next is Weavile, which I think you think is a really underrated card, which is basically has 90 HP, 1 retreat cost, and for 1 Dark Energy, it does 90 damage with its Dark Penalty attack, which is really nice, especially since it's a Dark Pokemon, and you can add a Darkest Energy to 100 damage with 1 Energy, but there's a huge drawback, which is if the defending Pokemon has no tool card attached to it, the attack does nothing. So basically, you might think that's a pretty bad card because it can't one-hit kill um, most Pokemon that use uh, you, you know that use the tool cards like Kyurems and Zekroms. Those are the two most common ones. But the one card I think it does work very well against is Durant. It kind of I guess it's to help hold you over until that Heatmore comes out that was in Dark Rush. But yeah. Uh, a, Dur a Durant, if you don't know, is a really annoying deck. Most people really hate that deck. And this card, and since Durant's a basic, you'll want to put Eevee Lights on it. Uh, and Durant has 70 HP, and with the Eevee Light, it takes 90 knockout, which is the magic number for 90. But if you attach a Steel Energy to Durant, it needs 100 damage. But that might suck. But if you attach a Special Dark, it does 100 damage. So it can one-hit kill any beefed-up Durant, unless they have like Defenders and more Special Metals, which usually they don't do. I actually did. Once I attached, no, no, you don't care about that. But yeah, or if you attach, if you attach more darkness energies, it can break through like a bunch of. You can break break through basically any defense that Durant has. You might think well once once they know you have a Weavile and that it's knocking out all your Pokemon, it they'll just stop attaching their uh, or your Evil Lights. But here's the thing: they'll stop attaching their Evil Lights. Then you'll it'll be easier to knock out with your other Pokemon like you know what I don't know. 
like Manny's own or Zekrom or whatever. Restroom, I guess, maybe. So yeah, basically, like, they'll either try to not attach EVA lights and just take the hit, or attach them in fear of them retreating for Weavile and knocking them out in one hit. So, and they could always use Crushing Hammer. In fact, you, you don't even have to run... You could, you could always just run, like, one Sneasel, and they'll be scared, if, depending on the player, they'll be scared to attach an EVA light at all. <laughs> That'd actually be pretty funny, just put a Sneasel down after the game, and like, oh, I don't actually have a Weavile. I was just trying to trick you. Time and map. So yeah, Weavile I think would be really useful. You might want to wanna run a one-one line with it, and uh, one darkness energy, unless you're you know, using a deck that uses darkness energy or something, a rainbow energy. And I rec I do recommend you use the Sneasel from a uh, uh, what's the deck from uh, Undaunted instead of this one because it's a lot better. So next is Shiftry, which is an interesting card. When its ability says uh, when you play this card from your hand, evolve one of your Pokemon, and flip a coin of heads, choose one of your opponent's Pokemon. And then your pump shuffles that Pokemon and all cards attached to it into his or her deck. Which is actually a pretty nice ability, but the only thing, I think it's not too great because the drawback is you have to flip a coin. And since you have to evolve it, it's not like a trainer where you can just use Junk Arm. You have to use Seeker or Super Scoop Up to just get get it back again and then just keep evolving over and over again until, you know, until you can do it again. And it's not going to work half the time, or if you get really bad luck, it's not going to work at all. But I don't see too many situations where there could be a great thing to have. You could shuffle in like a draw supporting card and prevent them from drawing a lot of cards and they draw all the cards they don't need, but you know. That could be used in some decks. Maybe if there's something that helps you flip coins later in a later set. Victine doesn't count since that's only for attacks. Next is Bronze Zone, which is actually a pretty nice one. As an ability to heal block, which has damage can't be healed from any Pokemon, both use and opponents, but it can still be moved. So this could work really well with Kyurem, Runicless, and uh, Dark Rider Celia, especially with Kyurem, because if Kyurem, if you use, like, Blissey Prime, you can get rid of all that damage, and it really sucks. But with Bronze on, they can't do that. And since, you know, no one runs healing attacks anyway, it doesn't really matter. And also, it works well with Runicless, because then you can move around your own. Well, not too weird with Kyurem, but it could also work very well with... Uh, Dark Rider Cresselia with the same reasons for Kyurem. They can't get rid of the damage, so you can move all the damage around and they won't be able to get rid of it. Unless they have a Reuniclus or something. And you just rock, knock out the Reuniclus with the damage. So yeah, Bronzon I think is a really playable card and I definitely recommend him in some decks, of course, like Kyurem. Next one is Wigglytuff, which is... Uh, you might think, why am I mentioning this? I've only mentioned the really great cards. But the attack round is 20 damage since another Pokemon that are the round attack and... If you, you know, if you have four Wigglytuffs, it only has 80 damage for two Carlos and, or, yeah, the double Carlos. But, think about it, there's actually another Pokemon with the round attack, and it's not Jigglypuff, it's actually Seismitoad from Noble Victories. It has the same exact attack, but does 30 damage. So if you have four Seismitoad out and wig, two Wigglytuffs out, it will do 180 damage. I don't know, this probably won't be too played of a deck, just because you have to get out so many Pokemon. But it's a thing to think about if you want to try out something obscure. That's what makes up all about. That's what mix-up's all about. Next one's Pit Up. It sucks because there's no Furos. No, there's no Tranquil or on Pheasant, so it sucks. Next is Cincino, which has a nice ability called Smooth Cut, which says if any damage is done to this Pokemon by attacks with a coin and heads, prevent that damage. Which could, again, be really nice just because it just gets rid of all the damage completely and it holds a decent attack. It's just 50 damage with three colors, and next time you use it, it does 100. Kind of like Bruzion from Null Victories. So this card could be used in some decks, like if you retreat your Pokemon and try to stall for a while. But it only has 90 HP, so it won't be able to stall for too long. Oh shoot, it's all the way over here. There you go. Yeah, it's, you know. Next on to the trainers, man. 19 minutes, I'm not close to none yet. Is Sillin, which says, is the only support, and says, so search your deck for three basic energy cards and put them in your hand. Which could be pretty nice for decks like Reshiflosion that only run they mostly run basic energy, but for decks like, uh, like what decks, like Kyurem and Cabalion, like cake decks, that would just be awful because all your energies is special, so it could, I personally prefer end of year's questions, but it's, uh, think about, try testing out Sillin instead of end of year's questions occasionally and see which one's better for your deck. Sillin also might be better if your deck runs less energy and your viewers will be better if you run more energy. Also, be could be great for inboard decks, by the way. 
Next is XP Share, which is a, a tool card, which says when you act Pokemon is knocked out by damage from opponent's attack, you may move a basic energy card that was attached to that Pokemon to this the Pokemon this card is attached to. Which can be a decent card, it's not the greatest card, but if you have like it, if you I think a strategy that might really work like work well is if you attach four EXP shares to all to four bench Pokemon and then you use a Pokemon like Meganium Prime or any other Pokemon later on that can move around to energy. So you can always keep those four energy and move them around however you want. Or keep a lot of them at least. The XP sure it could be used, but I don't think it's gonna be the greatest card in the world. Next is Heavy Ball, which is also a nice card. Search your deck for a Pokemon with a retreat cost of three or more and put it in your hand. Which is great for searching cards like Magnezone, uh, and Dawn Fan, and all the cards like that. And then also a lot of the EXs in the set have three or three costs or more. So Heavy Ball could be used in the right deck, but some decks will just not like it at all. Next one we have is Level Ball, I think is a really nice card, which says, Search your deck for a Pokemon with 90 HP or less and reveal it and put it in your hand. Which again is really, I think it's a personally a little better than Heavy Ball, especially in Durant decks, because there's... Like, no chance of a card in Durant deck will run 100 or more unless you use a Combalion in your deck. Cobalion, not Combalion. But, it's still really nice. I recommend using an over Dual Ball because it's just not luck based and Durant needs a really, really fast setup. And Level Ball provides that fast setup instead of Dual Ball. Next on to the two Stadium cards. Yes, Stadium cards in the set. There's two of them. Pokemon Center is the first one. It says, once during each player's turn, that player may heal 20 damage from other bench Pokemon. As I said earlier, it's really good in the combination with Luxray because you just do 20 damage on your bench and then you immediately heal that damage. Wasn't there another card that worked well with that? Uh, was it Chan? Yeah, it was Vanillux. Yeah, you just retreat your, uh, retreat your Pokemon and heal a little bit from them while you stall. So I think Pokemon Centers could be really playable in right decks or Reuniclus decks that swap around damage. You can heal 20 each turn. But... Again, right situation. There's some like sometimes it'd be better to use Plissy Prime or something. Next one is Skyrider Bridge. I think this one's gonna be pretty popular because its power is based or it's uh, says each player the retreat cost of each basic Pokemon is one less, which is really nice for again Durant because all the basics have like one retreat cost except for Drowsy if you run it. But Skyrider Bridge I think is actually pretty playable in a lot of decks like uh, Rush Explosion. Uh, like, it's also good in Zekrom decks because if they keep capturing off your past free juice or shaman and you can't build up or you can't seeker them to put them back in your hand, then there's a problem. But again, this is also, isn't it so, so good? Your opponent also gets to use the power as well. That's, I think, the big drawback for Durant and uh, most other decks because, like, then, you, then it's harder to catch up Pokemon. So... And just think about that when you're making a deck. I think in Durant you also you still should want, should run a switch, but you should also definitely also you should also run a sky or a bridge, or however a switch however many switch you regularly run. So next we have double card of energy, which is of course exactly the same as it always is. That's so always I always love this card, fantastic card. For it's two Carlos energy, great really good card. Next card is actually Prism Energy, which is a new special energy card, which says. If it's attached to a basic energy card, it provides every type of energy. If it's attached to an evolved Pokemon, it doesn't do anything. But there's just a colorless energy. But yeah, it's good for the nice card because a lot of the EXs use that. And it's also really great in like cake decks because, of course, um, all your Pokemon are going to be basics. Or maybe six, it will work perfectly in six corners because all, all your Pokemon, like literally all of them are basics. And that deck, since it has so many types, and already runs four, four metal energy, or even four rainbow energy, this would be a perfect card for cake decks, and you could still run one or two extra rainbow energy if you really need it. So Prism Energy, really, really good card. Now on to the EXs, and there's a lot of them, so let's get on to them. I'm actually going to go from worst to best, so we have six EXs. Let's start with my least favorite, Kirim. Kirim actually really isn't that great at all, because it... Uh, it's 180 HP, which most of them have, which is really, really nice. And for its first attack, does uh, 60 damage for water and two Carlos, and says discard a special energy card attached to the defending Pokemon, which is exactly the same as Machamp's uh, Crushing Punch. And it's not too great of a card, but could be, you know, it's not awful from setting up for your next attack, which is Hail Blizzard, which says this Pokemon can't use Hail Blizzard during your next turn for two water, two Carlos, and 120 damage. And that's not too great of a card, which you could do. Is you could run a Frogator Prime to set him up in two turns, and then you could also run Dodrio and Scatter a Bridge to put his retreat down to three or down to zero. I mean, 
and then have two Kyurem EXs set up so you keep using Hail Blizzard over and over again, and then for Alligator Prime to build them up really fast. That, I think, would be the only way this card could really be used to its full potential, just because and it's just not the best card for me. I don't know why. I'd say one of the worst EXs, even in Japan at this point. This next one, I think, is Zekrom EX. Uh, that might be a little surprising to a little, some people, but... Uh, yeah, he's, again, 180 HP, which is fantastic for a basic. And for a Lightning and two Carlos, it does 50 damage, and you can flip, and if heads, you do 30 damage. Nice card, of course. I mean, for base, decent base attack. And then two Lightning and two Carlos for a second attack, and 150 damage with this discard two energy attached to this Pokemon. Which is strange because the original Reshiram discarded energy, and now Zekrom does. But originally Zekrom did, just did damage to himself, so I like swapping positions. Man, this video is so freaking long. But I think it would be, again, you run Dodrio and Skyro or Bridge, and then run a lot of the Electrics, and you keep using the Electrics to build them up again. Uh, other than that, I don't think he's too playable. So, I'd have to prefer Reshiram EX. This so next one, I think, I think one, the next on the list is Regigigas EX, who uh, you might have thought would have been a little lower, like lower than Zekrom. I think most people agree that Kyurem's the worst, but Regigigas, I think, got a little higher standards than most people. Has, again, 180 HP, which is fantastic. And it does, for 3 Carlos energy, it does 60 damage, and you may also do 20 extra damage, and if you do, attack does 20 damage to itself. Of course, uh, decent attack, and its neck attack, Raging Hammer does 40, for, I mean, for 4, Carlos Energy does 50 damage, and it says, it does 10 more for each damage counter on this Pokemon, and because it has a freaking amazing 180 damage, you can do up to 220 damage if it has max damage on it. So if you use a Pokemon like your Nucleus, just put a per perfect amount of damage on it, I think this card could actually be really playable, but since it has such a high retreat cost and needs so many energy to attack, uh, I don't think it's going to be the most played card, obviously. It's safe for one of the other EXs, but yeah, he's pretty good, honestly. Hey, I, so I, some people, again, would say that Zekrom would be a little better, but I personally like Regigigas a lot. So next is Reshiram EX. I think he's the next best one. And he is actually really playable compared to Zekrom. Again, he has the same HP, first attack, and retreat cost, but his second attack is, also, is again, pretty similar, but slightly different. For two Fire and two Carlos, it does 150 damage, and, he says, and it does flip a coin. If Tails attack does 150 or does 50 damage to itself, which like that's an average of 20 or 30 damage return. Who honestly thought? Who honestly looked at Zekrom and said like, "Hmm, I think this is, I think this is so much a worse card than Reshiram. Let's kind of make him even better." But like, it's not true. Zekrom was 100. He was better than Reshiram in my opinion. Zek TZBS decks was like the most one of the most played in the format before Eelzone. And I mean, he's he's the second, but still, I, th I th honestly think that uh, they should have maybe put at sixty or seventy damage, or just did it forty damage yourself, and then keep. I just don't under quite understand that, but still, he's a very good card. Uh, good in rushy flosion if you're having trouble getting Teflosion out, and you just want to keep doing damage without having to worry about reattaching them. So yeah, Rush Ram, yeah, it's pretty good, honestly. Next one is Shaman EX. No, you, you knew you knew which one was going to be number one. But uh, first attack is really basic. Search your deck for Grass Energy. Attach it to one of your Pokemon. Check your deck afterwards. Not too bad. And also, this deck, this Pokemon has the lowest amount of HP for an EX, 110, which is really bad because you take two prize cards and you knock them out. So that might be this card's biggest weakness, but the second attack is well worth it, in my opinion. It says Revenge Blast. It's for oh, Grass and Carlos. It does 30 damage and says there's 30... Damage for each prize card your opponent has taken, which if your opponent has taken like three or four, like if it's taken three, and that's 120 damage just for two energy. If it's taken, they've taken four, it's 150. So I, I recommend this deck. I recommend this card for decks that aren't too heavy hitting and run a lot of ra rainbow and prism energies. Like I, I say, six corners would be a good fit for this and cake. Both pretty solid decks in my opinion. Uh, would go with that. Would be nice. Would be a little better with, I'd say, one or two Shaman EXs just for that late game because they aren't the heaviest hitters, the maximum of around uh, about 120 damage, sometimes a little bit more. But again, Shaman, I think, it would be a really great card to add into Cake and um, Six Corners. And of course, the best one is Mewtwo EX, the 
one that said he's going to break the entire format, and I don't necessarily think he's going to break the format, I just think he's going to change the way people will build their decks. Sort of. But his first attempt, again, he has 170 HP, which is the only other EX with not 180 in America. There's another one in Japan, which is less. And she costs a 2, which is the second lowest, again, next to Shaman. And his first attack, X-Ball, is considered to be incredibly insane, which says, for 2 colors, it does 20 damage times the amount of energy cards attached to this Pokemon and the offending Pokemon. Kind of like uh, Cobalion's Renault Victory's Energy Press. But a lot better because you can power up him up with double callless energy. He'll do 60 damage. No, he'll do 40 damage right off the bat. And if your opponent's already been building up, uh, do a lot. And with Gardevoir, it's going to do a lot. He's going to do even more because if he is twice the damage, if you attach psychic energy. And uh, 